and welcome 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 back to my channel if you are a returning subscriber hey, thank you guys for coming back home. thank you so much guys for you know watching my videos i appreciate the support so far without wasting time let's go into the subject of today if you have been watching my videos you will know that i love christian films i do some um, reviews from time to time particularly my entire movies i love their movies if you watch that movie and you're sensitive you'd realize that the movie is packed i mean the movie is seriously loaded so in this video i'm basically going to be sharing 30 lessons that i learned from this amazing movie first of all i would like to say that the movie was written and produced by gloria Pamelui. most times when you see movies that involve the family and all of that it's most likely written by our mama number one I think the number one lesson I learned is that parents do not own a child. You see, there are two brothers, Edward and John, and you see that the father has mapped out their lives. Like, okay, this is the route you guys are going to take. Kind of, you don't have a choice. The fact that you um, give birth to the child doesn't mean you determine their purpose or determine the course of their life. God is the one that knows their purpose. God is the one that created them. So number two, I learned that when the purpose of a thing is not known, then abuse is inevitable. John knew his purpose, so it was very easy for him to say no to things. So if a person doesn't know his purpose, they are easily swayed. So when you know your purpose, like I always say, when you discover your purpose, you begin to do things on purpose. That's number two lesson. Number three is, ha! Huh, this one, very important, grades do not define you. Grades do not define or determine your destiny. We can see that John didn't really make a good grade in the university, but his life turned out great because God was with him. So if you are watching this thinking, oh, my grades are not very good, your grades do not define you. God can still make something great out of your life even if you didn't come out with a good grade. But I'm not saying that if you are in school, you should now say, whatever I graduate with, God will still make something good. No, still do your best, even in your school. <laughs> the number four lesson I learned is from a scripture that says that even if my father and my mother forsake me, the Lord will hold me close. Now, I will try not to be a spoiler here, but in the course of the story, we saw how John's father wasn't comfortable with a lot of the things he did. From that point, we saw how um, John now had a very like closer and intimate relationship with God. God drew him close. So the fifth lesson I learned is the importance of sticking with God and that one with God is majority. So no matter what it is you go through, I learned that once you have God on your side, in the end, it will end in testimony. So we can see that in the life of the major character. Go and watch it to know what I am talking about. Number six, this is very, very important and it is honor your parents. I learned the importance of giving honor to whom honor is due. At some point, we see that John's father was against him, but he chose to still honor him. Number seven, this is also something that came very subtle, but I actually picked it and it is the fact that there is no superior land, but we have a God that, you know, that is the one that created the heavens and the earth. So wherever he leads you, that place is the best place for you. So if he leads you to go to the village, that's the best place for you. If he leads another person to go to or go abroad, that's the best place for them. No need to feel like, oh, I'm inferior because I'm in this part of the world and that part of the world. Stay where God has called you to be. The most important thing is being where God wants you to be. The lesson number eight is the role of a mother and how a wise woman builds her home. We can see that in the role of John's mother that, you know, John's father was difficult he was a man that wanted to always have his way whatever he said was final but you see how she handled things with wisdom and i believe that a lot of um mothers and women can really bring a change in their homes by just employing wisdom and building their homes with um, discretion so i really picked that as well number nine i learned the importance of evangelizing you see there was a part where you know God was leading John, Holy Spirit was leading John to evangelize to his boss. If you are ignored and say, God, I don't want to. It's important that when the Holy Spirit, you know, gives us instruction, and that's another point, learning to obey instructions. When God tells you evangelize to somebody, don't say, God, I can't. Just trust in him and trust that he will give you utterance just the way John prayed. Any soul you witness to and they give their life to Christ, you don't know what would have happened to them the next day if they hadn't really. I learned the importance of waiting on God and seeking his face continuously. Now, this is something that John practiced in every phase and season of his life. He always sought the face of God. Oh God, what are you saying at this point in time? What is the step you want me to take? So I learned the importance of waiting on God and seeking on God for direction. Number 11, I learned also serving God. John was very sold out to God, even in his university. And I love that point they made 
say that John was actually very, very studious, even more studious than his brother, Edward. We have a message that, okay, even when John was very committed, was, you know, committed in the fellowship, he still took his academics seriously. Him having that result was all part of God's plan. So yeah, I learned the importance of serving God when you're a young person. Even when you go older, the importance of putting God first. Remember the Bible says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and every other thing will be added unto you. So number 12, the importance of taking steps. I touched on it earlier about obedience. It's important that even as you seek the face of God, he will give you instructions, be willing to take steps. Faith without works, as the Bible says, is dead. John was willing to take steps. When he sensed God leading him to do something, he took steps. Talking about steps, I learned that the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. John was a good man who was a righteous man. And we see God ordering his steps. We see God leading him in every step of the way. So we see that God orchestrated things. God made it in such a way that he didn't travel overseas. He didn't travel to America. Maybe if he had traveled abroad, he wouldn't have met the bone of his bone and the flesh of his flesh. Number 14. This is very important, very, very important. Seek God's will in marriage. When you are getting ready to settle down, it's not every Tom, Dick, and Harry, every Mary, Jane, and Jennifer <laughs> that you settle for. You have to seek the will of God. God, what are you saying? I like this person. I have feelings for them. But God, what are you saying? It will get to a point in your life that God will, you know, I believe... He will just make it clear to you. You might not hear, oh, my daughter taught hear the Lord, but you will just know. It could be through the word, the inward voice, the peace, or just that conviction. You just know that this is God's will. So don't marry based on physical parameters. Oh, the person has a paper, has a pizza, or the person has a good job. Seek the will of God. There's something very important that John's friend advised him. That is Samson. Samson advised John, even when he found this lady, check her spiritual background. That really spoke to me because I feel like it's not enough to feel God is leading you to a person but check their background how committed are they in church what do they believe what is their faith or what denomination are they Catholic are they Anglican because all these things will affect the marriage at the end of the day you have to know these things that spiritual background what do they believe in number 16 is putting God at the center or put God at the center of your relationships. Now, when you start a relationship, even if it's not a marriage relationship, but very important in a marriage relationship or a marital relationship, put God at the center. I love what John did when he realized that this is God's will. He prayed about so they committed the relationship to God's hands. It was a God-centered relationship. I learned the importance of having good Christian friends, covenant friends like I call them. It's very important that you have that one person at least that can advise you in a spiritual way, can guide you, can pray with you, can counsel you. Samson was constantly being there for John. He advised him, prayed with him. You know, he was there when he was down. He was there when he found this lady. He was there when a lot of things were happening. So it's important to have people that will not just sympathize with you, but also will tell you, okay, this is the godly approach to take in this matter. You know, the Bible says that there's a friend that sticks closer than a brother. We all need that friend. I learned the importance of mentorship. Now, there's this man that, like, he's a spiritual father to John. When John is down, when John had issues, he went to this man, and this man advised him. This man led him. This man spoke to him, prayed with him, gave him godly counsel. We need that in our lives today. God will send people that will guide you, people that have gone through the path that you have gone to, that will be a blessing to you. So don't, don't, it's not enough to have friends. It's not enough to be in a church. John turned out the way he did because of the presence of that man in his life. And then I also learned the importance of discipling new believers. This is very important because we see that even when John led his boss to Christ, he started discipling him in a way. He would, you know, check up on him. He went to see his family. He, um, when he wanted to speak to his friend, John encouraged him like, oh, you can preach to this person. You have Christ in you. It's important that when you lead someone to Christ, don't leave them like that. Make sure you check up on them. Make sure you pray with them. Ask them how they are doing. Cater for their spiritual needs and their physical needs as well as the Lord gives you the grace. Attend a Bible-believing church. We see that with um, John's boss. When you watch, you will see he had this option to go to a church based on status. He was a big man now. So he had the choice to go to a church based on status. But he said, mm -mm, I want a church where I need the word of God. Attend a church because they believe in the word of God and your spirit agrees and you know that this is where I'm supposed to be. Don't go to a church because of status and because of friends.
the importance of being excellent in the workplace, in academics, and whatever it is God, ha- God has committed in our, in our hands. Now, this is something that I'm very passionate about. Don't say I'm a Christian and you, you go to work and you're sloppy, you're late. Oh, I'm fasting. That's why I cannot deliver. No, you are a Christian is the more reason why you should be able to set the, the, the standard there. I'm a child of God, yes, but I'm not a, I'm not mediocre. I hate mediocrity like anything. So I learned that even when John needed to leave the work, leave his um, place of work, the boss didn't want him to go because John showed a lot of excellence. He was an excellent person. The scripture in Colossians 3.23 says, Whatever you do, work at it with all your heart. Work at it like you are even working, you are doing the work for God. Number 22 is that there is no bias or prejudice when getting you know married i learned this thing from john's fiance your wife to be when she spoke about how you know you can marry somebody even if the person is not you know black you can marry a white person the most important thing is god is in that relationship don't shun them because of tribe listen to what god is saying you should be open oh, i learned humility one thing i learned about john is that john is a very humble person even when his brother would talk to him anyhow, John maintained his humility. He was dedicated, he was faithful in his assignment. And I believe that was why he was he attained that promotion in the end. Because God, he has been faithful in every stage. He has been faithful. He showed that, ah, God, even when you when things are good, when things are bad, I remain faithful to you. I remain faithful in the assignments you have put in my hands. So I learned faithfulness, humility, and dedication from John. Number 25 is you should believe in God's due season. Don't be in a hurry. Psalm 1 says that the, the, the Psalm 1 verse 3 is the light is in the law of the Lord. The man shall bring forth his fruit in his due season. Note that word. We see that with John's life, it didn't seem like he was making headway in the beginning. But as he went through, you saw that this man, you know, he started to bear fruit in his due season, not when his parent, his dad was saying, oh, it's time to do this, time to travel abroad. No, you will bear fruit in due season. When God says it's time for you to do something, it will happen. Number 26, every challenge is a preparation for your next level. Yes, when challenges come your way, it prepares you for the next level. It prepares you for that place God is taking you to. So when this thing comes, you might not even realize it at that point. It is when you get to a certain level, you're like, ah, all these things I've been going through, God has been preparing me. I can see that in John's life that he went through a lot. But when God started to decorate him, it was like back to back. Wife, good job, everything, car, everything. So when challenges come your way, always, always, you know, remember that your end is greater. Number 27, I learned that God is a rewarder. The Bible says that he that must come to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder. So you can say that God rewarded John's um faithfulness, that he was faithful to God. He served God. He was faithful. He did not waver and God rewarded him in his due season. So God is a rewarder. Number 28 is that Christianity is synonymous to being successful. People think, well, because I'm a Christian, that means I should be poor. I should be this. Is, um, they think they mistake poverty for being humble. No, as a Christian, that's the more reason you should be successful because you have God with you. You see, there's a scripture that says that Joseph was successful because God was with him. Wow, you have God with you. So that's the more reason why you should be successful in your workplace, in your ministry, in your business. John's boss, you know, his, his, his boss in the movie, he gave his life to Christ and was still successful in his business. And then number 29. Ha! 29, 29 seconds to the last one. I learned that you can do all things through Christ. You see, in the end, when John got that very enormous promotion, when Daddy Mike was praying for him in that scene, he said something, you can do it through Christ. And I thought about John's entire story. Every phase of his life, it was depending on God. So he did it not by his own power, not by his own might, but by the Spirit of God in him. And Bible says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Number 13, and this is very important, the importance of prayer. We can see how prayer manifested. Was it when John's father was sick? Prayer. John prayed for him. When the boss had problem with his um, child, John prayed for him. John prayed when he started his relationship. John and Ed and Samson prayed together. And John prayed concerning his wife or wife to be. There were a lot of you know things that indicated prayer. We could even say that you know John himself had was a person of prayer. Samson seemed like a person of prayer. Even in the hospital, John was praying. I learned that men always ought to pray and not to faint. As believers, prayer is key in our work with God. The apostle said in the book of Acts 6, verse 4, that we must give ourselves to prayer and to the ministry of the word. So I would encourage you, 
prayer should be a priority. Yes, prayer should be your priority. So those are my 30 lessons and more that I learned from this um movie. There's so many things to pick if you are sensitive. When I was watching it, I was just typing. I encourage you to watch it. It's a great movie. If you are a believer, please, I encourage you, watch Christian movies, watch Mount Zion movies. Because what are you watching? Don't watch things that are contaminating your spirit all in the name of fun. Well, Christian movies are not fun. I know there's no action. What's, which kind of action are you looking for? I, I get so blessed. In fact, I look for, I look forward to having Christian movies to watch its own. Damilola, my Bami Doye's YouTube channel. You will be so blessed there. I promise you. And of course, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Yay. And please, please, please subscribe to my channel. Don't leave without subscribing. And as well, share. And of course, leave a comment. What did you learn from the movie? I would love to know. Leave that in the comments. Thank you so, so much. And of course, please, when you subscribe, don't forget to turn on the notification bell. That way you know when I release and um, upload a new video. Thank you so much for watching. God bless you. Most important beyond subscribing to me please watch the movie it will be a great blessing to you god bless you and i'll see you in my next one